Hey everyone, it's me, Christine, the creator of Flourish in the Foreign podcast and platform. Platform because we do have a website, www.flourishintheforeign.com, with lots of resources, and it's being updated every single time I, that I remember to update it, to be honest. <laughs> also have the Flourish in the Foreign YouTube channel, definitely check that out for different interviews and things like that. So today I'm here to chat with all of you about the fear of failing abroad, the fear of going abroad and it not working out. That is what today's conversation is about. It is the reason why I chose this uh, topic is because it is a topic that comes up a lot in some of the emails that I get um, from some of you who are on the email list, in the comments of the YouTube channel, in the DMs and Instagram. And in my one on one chats, I do have a moving abroad with intention chat. I have those chats, and that is. A lot of the anxiety that's expressed, I always do like an intake questionnaire during that questionnaire, but then also in our conversations is the fear of failing abroad. What is the fear of failing abroad? The fear of failing is I want to go abroad. I'm going to go abroad and I'm going to hate it. What well, people are going to hate me or I'm not going to be able to support myself and I'm going to be destitute in a different country and I won't be able to come home. Um, or I will come home and I'll come home with my tail between my legs and everybody who's a naysayer, everybody who didn't believe in me before is going to be like, ha ha, told you, who are you to think that you could live your life abroad? Who do you, who are you to think that you can do these things? That is the fear that I'm hearing a lot, a lot about the failure aspect and really what the failure, failure aspect really sounds like to me it's also a fear of judgment. It's a fear of judgment. It's a fear of what are people going to think if I go for something that I really want to do and it doesn't work out? What, what am I going to do with people who think I can't do this or they don't think it's a good idea and they end up being right? Um, what, if, what, what if my current life, how it is right now, is as good as it's going to get? What if that's the what what if that is the case for me? Like I want more, I'm unhappy, but what if this is actually just my lot in life? Like that's as good as it's going to get. So, I wanted to talk about those fears today. I wanted to talk about how do you combat that and how do you push through that? And honestly, I think the biggest way to combat that is to one, be super, super intentional about how you are going abroad. Now, I want to give you guys a chance if you have any questions or any concerns or any thoughts about the subject, fear of failing abroad or about living abroad, moving abroad, be sure to put your questions in the question um, box below or you can put in the comments, sure. So let me say why I think the remedy or the antidote to the fear of failing abroad really is intentionality. One, because mostly the fear of failing abroad has to deal with, like I said, judgment from others. And I think also probably rooted in uh, a survival need. And that's why intentionality is so, so key. Why do I say that? So if you listen to the podcast, if you have watched some of the videos, if you watch some of these IG lives, I always say you have to go abroad with intention. I always tell, tell everyone that it's not about going abroad. It's not about being abroad. It's about thriving abroad. And the only way to thrive abroad is by knowing who you are and what you're looking for in your life, period. So if you have the fear of going abroad and failing, the remedy to that is knowing who you are, knowing what you need to thrive abroad and knowing really what you define success. And if you really tap into that, then the other noise really, really becomes mute. So let's start from the very beginning when I tell everyone who does a one-on-one -on -one with me or if you've listened to the podcast, the first step to ensuring that you do not fail abroad is by being really clear as to why you want to go abroad. 
That is probably the number one thing. So I always recommend everyone to first write down what is going well in your life right now, currently wherever you are, and what is not going well in your life. Break it down into what I call like wellness sectors. So what is going well financially in your financial wellness, professional wellness, emotional, physical, spiritual wellness, whatever sectors really define your life, what is going well? And don't think about it, really write it down. Right? I want you to write it down. Then I want you to write within those sectors, what are the things that are not working out? What are the things that are like, this is some BS. I don't like it. And you know, and that may be a long, long list. But again, write it out. Take the time to give your dreams and also yourself that attention, right? A lot of times when people fail abroad is because they don't really think through their moves, but also they don't really know themselves, right? Everybody want to go to Portugal. Portugal may not be for everyone, right? So the first step is to write down what is currently working for you, what is not currently working for you. Now, from that list, from everything that is working with for you, take that list and write another list. And or off to the side and say, okay, from the things that are currently working for me, is this due to my dazzling brilliance or is this environmental? Why do I say to do that? Well, it's important to know how much is like you just being bomb and you're like, well, I can be bomb anywhere in the world. Okay, great. And how much is has to do with maybe your environment. Maybe it's a support thing. Maybe it's an opportunity thing that you feel. So it's important for you to understand what is bringing so much greatness or richness or working well in your life and what, what is the source of that, right? Similarly, in the list that is not working for you, it's really important for you to write out is it me or is it my environment? Now, this is why I want you to write it out because it's, it's really important for you to be really real with yourself because wherever you go in the world, you bring yourself. And if you lie to yourself in this exercise, it's gonna catch up with you. It's gonna catch up with you in Colombia. It's gonna catch up, you, catch up with you in Australia, okay? You cannot outrun yourself. You bring yourself everywhere that you go. And if you think that moving abroad to a different country is going to be the bomb for you, a, a bomb for you, it's going to heal you, you're wrong. And you will attract the same cycles and the same situations and the same people. And you're going to be dumbstruck because they're going to speak with a different accent or a different language. It's going to be the same old BS because you have not changed. So take your time in this exercise and write out the things that are currently not working for you within these sectors, right? Financial, emotional, physical, spiritual, professional, and write out whether it's me or if it's an environmental factor and be honest. And guess what? It's probably not going to be like me, environmental. You're probably going to have to write it out, right? Because if you're anything like me, if I got to take accountability for myself, I'm like, it's me, but let me write out this explanation. <laughs> write out the explanation. Go ahead. So that you can see for yourself what is going on. The things that you are saying, I don't care for in my life. I want something different in these areas of my life. You can see how much of it is you and how much of it is environmental. Now, with that information, what you can do is then, or what you should do, as as a next step is to see okay the things that are me i gotta take ownership of and i know that moving to tanzania or south africa is not going to solve these things because they're me they're not environmental so let me already start a plan in place into how i'm going to remedy this if this is me then I have to say, what is my best version of myself? Or a new thing that I've just heard on the internet is instead of, uh, instead of looking for or aspiring for our highest and best self, which I love because love and light, I want to aspire and I want to reclaim my favorite version of myself. What? Let me say that again. Your favorite version of yourself, which gives you so much grace and so much, it's so much more playful because your highest and best, at least for me, is like when I'm just really, you know, I've meditated, I've drank all my water, I've done, you know, my journaling, and I'm like, it's a really good person today. My favorite person 
can do some of those things. My favorite person might be a little more mischievous and, and playful and fun. And that is my favorite person. That is where we're trying to go. So we're trying to look at the things that are not working in our lives that are really preventing us from being our favorite version of ourselves, right? Because we're trying to match our favorite version of ourselves with a country, a city, a community, a culture, a, a value system that is going to allow our favorite versions of ourselves to thrive, to play and have fun, right? So if we don't think about living abroad and moving abroad, as in where is my favorite version of myself going to thrive and have the most fun and be supported, then we kind of set ourselves up for, for failure. But also, like I said, we have to understand what are the aspects of ourselves, what are the aspects of our current situation that are preventing us from being our favorite version of ourselves. That is not giving permission to ourselves to give, to be our favorite version of ourselves. That is crucial. That is very, very crucial. Because again, wherever you go, you bring yourself. So the first part of going abroad and thriving and making it a success is understanding who you are and what you are looking for. And then instead of picking a country based off of its supply of fresh coconuts, which I mean, fresh coconuts are amazing, but really trying to pair a country with the country or trying to understand the country's values, community to pair with your values and the things that you're looking for to be part of your, to support your favorite version of yourself. Does that make sense? Let me know if you have any questions, concerns or whatever, put them in the comments, put it in the question box below. So that's the first step. Now, once we figure that out, it is also incumbent upon us to really let go of external validation. Why? Because it's something that we should just do, probably. But when you move to a different country with a completely different set of cultural norms and customs, going and looking for external validation in that country, as you know it, as you are programmed from a different culture, a different lifestyle, is literally setting yourself up for just rejection and, and ridiculousness because it's not going to be an alignment. Like your programming is not going to be the same as someone else's cultural values in which they're looking for and which they think is great. And so seeking external validation in a different culture like that is just going to hurt your feelings at first. It's just going to hurt your feelings. So let's just stop doing that first and let's really decide what success and what a life well lived means to us. But also, before you even go, you have to understand that there will be people that support you, great. And then you go abroad and then their, their tune changes. There's people that are not gonna support you and are gonna fear monger you. Don't do it. Don't you think you're gonna get taken or something? And when you go abroad, they're gonna forget you. There's going to be people who are not gonna understand you and just be like, I don't know, I guess if you wanna do that. The thing I'm trying to say is that this has been placed on your heart. It's your vision. It is not for anyone else's understanding. So do not seek external validation, especially from people who have no wanting to do what you want to do and have no experience doing what you want to do. You have to cut it out. You have to cut it out because if you are if you are just encased in anxiety and fear of what your mom and them are going to think about you if you come back home, then you're going to be moving in a way based out of fear and anxiety while you're abroad. No, if I wanted to come home, I'm going to come home because I can, because I have citizenship, right? You don't need to fear, like coming home is not necessarily a failure of living abroad because you get to move around. Great. But the thing is, is that you have to decide what success means to you and you have to be your own validation. The biggest fear of failing abroad does is usually rooted in judgment from other people and it just doesn't make any sense. You just can't do it. You can't live your life like that because if you want to go back home, you can go back home. And if you want to stay forever, you can stay forever, but not based upon someone else's ideas or thoughts about you. That makes no sense whatsoever okay so we have to stop that now 
The third thing, third aspect of failing abroad is I think basically rooted in the first thing, which was not knowing yourself and not knowing what you want. You know, I know that some people feel frustrated and they want to go abroad yesterday and they can't handle it and they don't, they just need to go. They need, need, need to go. The problem about moving anywhere in any kind of aspect of your life from a place of, I would say desperation and I would say a place of fear is that that is what you really kind of project into your future as well right? You're trying to get outside of this hamster wheel of going, 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 and, and fight or flight, fight or flight, fight or flight. And you're trying to just go and escape to some place. I think that, of course, situations change and are different for every single person. And you may need to just decompress and go somewhere. But to really build a life that's sustainable for you, you have to take the time to understand who you are. The research cannot be what is the best country for X, Y, and Z. No, absolutely not. I That's like my biggest pet peeve. It drives me nuts. I think those articles are interesting. They're interesting. Like what? What are you talking about? But they are not, they, are, they should not be the foundation for your country choice or how you go abroad. Do not do that. You are an individual. You have a family if you're taking your family or a partner. You guys have unique, customized needs, wants, wants and wishes. What I find is that people are sometimes so hyped to go abroad and they are just so focus on escape, 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 that they don't think about the things that they really need to thrive. They don't take that time. And I think that coming from an American culture in which we are always on the go, 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 a lot of us don't take the time for deep introspection. We don't have the time to really think about what our values are. Are our values really our own? Or are they values that have been you know, projected upon us because of society. What are these values? Do, are these desires that I want really what I want? Or am I just going with the crowd because that's what I've been conditioned to do? That's what I've been conditioned to do. And, you know, everybody else is going to Mexico. Everybody else is going to Portugal. Everybody else is going to Panama. Everyone else is going wherever. So I guess it's a good place. It's a good place for me. It's a good place for them. No, no. And don't, don't, don't. Don't use the guise of like, well, I'm looking for a black community and these are people there. And so, okay, I think it's wonderful to have community of black people or whatever your ethnicity is, but do not use that as a scapegoat. I am, I'm gonna be real with you. Don't use that as a scapegoat as to why you have just decided on a place. It is, if it's really important to you, of course, it's valid, but you have to do the work. The work goes beyond visa, visa class, right? That's no, the, the work is really understanding politically what's going on in a country, economically, culturally, values, day to day. What do you really want? Not what you can get by on and you can endure. That's what's really important to do. And I just don't think enough people take themselves seriously. I really don't. Like, I think a lot of people use going abroad as an escape, I think they also don't take the time to get to know themselves. So they end up in situations in which they are mad at Colombia, at Portugal, at Panama, at all these places because they haven't taken the time to know who they are and what they truly need. Now, again, if you just need to go and go, well, then go and then take a moment and regroup and then move on because that's another aspect is just because in a country that you first set out on doesn't work doesn't mean you need to go back home. It means that you get to pivot and it means that you get to take that information that you have, um, you've been able to understand and absorb and to really understand, right? To really uh, refine it into your next best move, right? If you have, have you haven't checked out the podcast, um, Adelia's podcast episode, um, episode four in it's called country shopping and she talks about that uh adelia lived in honduras mexico kuwait china and then ended up back in mexico just because things don't work out doesn't mean you have to go back home however again in adelia's episode she talks about the importance of sustainability and financial sustainability so that she can be able to make those moves she calls it fu money 
Yes, she calls it F you money. Maybe it's a maybe you go abroad with a partner, doesn't work out, it happens, and you're like, well, I'm leaving. <laughs> You could stay, but I'm leaving. Or a country, and you're like, oh, this is not for me. You need that money and those resources to be able to make that move. You need to you need to do that. You don't have to go back home. But you have to think about sustainability, which is why it's so important to understand what are your values, what are the things that you need to do to have a great life abroad. What does that mean to you, truly? But you have to, no one else can tell you that. No one else can tell you that. And so the fear of failing abroad becomes a fear of knowing yourself truly and a fear of not being able to live up to perhaps a romanticized dream. But the thing is, is that living abroad, yeah, it's wonderful. I'm not gonna say it's not. I live in Spain, it's great. Um, But you know what? I still wash dishes. Or you have to use a dishwasher. Maybe you move somewhere where you have help. You still got to go to immigration, even if you have an immigration attorney. Like, there's still things that are not pleasant or whatever. But it's important for you to understand who you are. I'm going to keep on saying that because that is why people fail abroad. They don't know who they are. And because they don't know who they are, they choose countries based off of vibes or trends. Um, and they don't understand what they really need in their life. Some people can move abroad with a backpack. Some people need help abroad, whether it be, um, you know, for cleaning their house or to maybe it's, it's health care help, right? Someone to live in with them. But you have to be real about who you are. You have to. And you then make those preparations. That's how you combat the fear of failing abroad because then you say, even if, I don't like it here or even if I'm like mm, it's just it's good but it's I think I could do better you don't think that it is catastrophic because it's not you don't think like I have to go back home with my tail between my legs because you're like if I decide to go back home it's because I'm doing it on my terms you understand what I'm saying that is what I want us all to move into it's to stop living in this space of judgment, but also of group think. It's really important for you to understand who you are and what you're looking for when you're going abroad, period, point blank. I'm gonna pause for a second. Thank you so much for dropping in on this chat about, you know, people's fear, and it was my fear of failing abroad and how to combat it. If you have any questions about this topic or living abroad, Spain, whatever you want to talk about, go ahead and put it in the comments below or in the question box. Also, let me know where you're tuning in from or just say hi to me or things like that. Whatever you want to do, you can do that as well. So I wanted to talk about that because I think that this is a conversation that I've had with so many people who come into my DMs, like I said before, and I also have these one-on-one -on -one chats that I do um, for people who are wanting to move abroad with intention. And that is always a conversation that comes up. And truly the antidote to that is by moving with intention. And people are like, but what does that mean? Do you really think that journaling is gonna prevent me from failing abroad? And I'm like, yeah, it, it actually will because you will be forced to be serious and real with yourself. You know, it's like this. People are like, well, you know, you see it on different forums. People are like, well, I'm looking for a cheap place with good health care. Where should I move? What does that mean to y'all? What does that even mean to you? Like, what does a cheap place with good health care mean to you? Without the necessary introspection, that could be a lot of places. I mean, in some places, some parts of the world, Paris is cheap to people. I mean, what are we talking about? <laughs> like, what are, what are we talking about? That's why it's so important to be introspective. That's why it's so important to be real about your needs and your desires. What, is health, what does good health care mean to you, okay? Are you looking for a place that's going to have uh, like top level surgeons or something like that? Are you looking for a place that's going to be able to speak English so you'll get your health care um, in English? Are you looking for that? Are you looking for a place that has, you know, 
excellent maternal care? Are you looking for a place that has great pediatric care? Or if, or if you have a chronic illness, they have that speci speciality. Let's be specific because good healthcare does not mean, it doesn't mean the same things to other people, right? And the access to good healthcare. This is another thing that drives me nuts. People are like, I wanna go someplace that has universal healthcare. You may still not have access to that universal healthcare because you're a foreigner. It doesn't mean that the healthcare systems will turn you away like in the United States, but it doesn't mean that you have access to that universal healthcare. I live in Spain. Spain is comprised of 17 comunidades. Each comunidad um, is in charge of its own healthcare system. So depending on where you live depends on, they set the rules on who accesses their healthcare system. I live in Catalonia. I don't have access to the healthcare system. I pay private healthcare. Some other some other comunidades, I would pro I would definitely be able to access uh, because of my visa class of uh, their uh, their universal their their national healthcare system. So you, we must be like clear about that. I have excellent healthcare and I pay thirty six thirty six forty one I think is what it is euros a month for it. And for me, good healthcare means being able to see a doctor for any kinds of reasons within a reasonable amount of time and that I don't have to pay for it, most of it. Like that is good healthcare for me. I don't pay copay. Um, I'm not a sickly person, uh, thank goodness. And I go see the doctor when I need to go see them. If something is up, I get my blood drawn, I get all my things done, which is what happened last August. I got all these tests done. And I didn't pay anything. I got a full look over. That's, that's important to me. You know, if I was thinking about having children, like you guys have, who've listened to the podcast, I've had several guests on my podcast who've had children abroad and I always ask them, how much is it to have that child in that country? How much did it cost you? Because it's important because that sometimes perhaps you have good health care, but maternal health care is different or it's, it's treated differently or it's different cost. Now, if you've listened to the podcast recently, I had um, Star in Budapest and she said, you know, health care in Hungary is great, but it doubles if you want them to speak English. Doubles. And so I think she said the cost of her having her child, her daughter in Hungary was 10,000 U.S., that might be cheap. I don't know, I haven't had a child. I've also had Deanna on the podcast who was living in Hong Kong at the time. She had her first child uh, in Atlanta and it cost her, I forget how much it cost her, but I think it's, it's definitely in the podcast. But when she had her child in Hong Kong, she paid the difference, the balance of her account, what her insurance can cover with her Metro card. Yes, her Metro card. I'm not joking. Her Metro, because I mean, in, in Hong Kong, your Metro card could be your Metro card, but also you can maybe purchase things like vending things. It has other kinds of uses. She purchased it. She she paid for it via her Metro card, and it was, uh, again, her, the exact amount is in the podcast, and I think it was maybe 40 USD is what she owed. And she had, she worked, went to a public hospital. She... I think it was a natural birth and she was given all of the post care goodies and things like that. That's important for you to know. You need to be specific about it. I want us to take that time instead of wanting to move, 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 really understand what you want, really understand education. You may say, I want a place that has great education for my kids. What does that mean? In Spain, you can't homeschool your kids. So what does that mean, right? I know you might think, what? You really can't. They're like, no, you can't homeschool your kid. You don't have no, you don't have accreditation. Take your kid to school. What does that mean to you? I, do you want your kid to go to an excellent public school? What does an excellent public school mean? And will your kid be able to thrive there? In my episode with Barbara and Jordan, she took her boys to Jordan and um, I think her youngest went to a public school in Jordan where he struggled because he didn't speak Arabic at the time and so they had to work with him and I think they got him a tutor and now he's thriving he speaks Arabic do you want your kid to go to an international school uh, or to a school that has an international track or an immersion track and things like that these are things that you have to be 
really real with yourself about what is it that is most important to you and what does that vision of your life really look like? Look at it past the Instagram and vacation photos, which I think is great for vision boarding, but your kid is still gonna go to school and have exams, right? You are still gonna have to wash dishes probably, I don't know. Like, There's some things that are still gonna be happening in your life that are like, it's life. It may be quote unquote mundane. So it's important for you to actually be really real about what that life looks like. How does it feel? If you're not going by yourself, how how does the rest of your family grow and and thrive what are they what are they doing that's what is so important and that is what prevents you from failing abroad is really understanding your your needs and your values and then pairing it with a country that looks like if you haven't been that it's actually going to be supportive of that vision not just going to a place because everybody else is going and you know and i say that because I think Portugal is dope, but I don't know if Portugal is for everybody, to be honest. I think Colombia is great, but I don't know if Medellin or Cartagena is for everyone or Cali is for everyone. Uh, I think Panama is great, but I don't know if Panama is for everyone. I think Ghana is great. I don't know if Ghana is for everyone. These are the things that you have to think about. These are things I, these are the things, this is how you prevent failing abroad or feeling like you failed. Because let's think about it. If you are intentional and something doesn't work out, you don't necessarily feel like you're failing. You just feel like, okay, this is great. You know what, This it did have X, Y, and Z and I said I needed X, Y, and Z, but you know what, being here, I actually realized I needed A, B, and C. A, B, and C, is these are the priorities, not X, Y, and Z. You see what I'm saying? You don't feel like you failed and you don't feel defeated. You, I think you only feel defeated when you go in uh, on romanticized notions based not in anything that you want. Not in anything that you really, really want. Okay? I'm going to take some more time. If you have any questions about moving abroad, put them in the comment section or in the question box. Um, no question is stupid or too little. If you have a question or if you have a comment about your experience living abroad, put that in the comment section uh, uh, below. You know, I just posted, I think, was it yesterday, the Instagram post, go abroad and cultivate a life well lived. A lot of people resonated with it. So let me know what does a life well lived mean to you in the comment section too. But also check that I said cultivate. I didn't say just move abroad and live your best life. <laughs> I said, go abroad and cultivate a life well lived because Look, it's work. And if I'm the only one that's ever said that to you, come on. It is work. It is work. Now, the difference is, do I feel like my soul's being sucked out of my body? No, not at all. <laughs> do I feel like I'm being stretched and, 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 and I'm growing? Yes. Do, are my insecurities, are my insecurities exposed? <laughs> to the masses. Yes. <laughs> Do I have to work through my insecurities? Yes. Insecurity of, gosh, you know, I speak Spanish, but uh, you know, this is especially with language. People are like, you speak Spanish, right? And I'm like, I still am like, no, like, you know, because I still have the insecurity of, of sounding stupid and not being able to communicate the way that I can communicate in English. But guess what? The only way to really get that confidence is by doing it. And so I have to like be exposed and continuously speak my horrible accent Spanish because with me in Spanish, it's either like my accent is pretty good, but I'm just talking nonsense or I am speaking Spanish with a crazy American accent that I just can't. It can't be both at the same time. And I don't know what that's about. Um, I'm getting a, a I'm getting a teacher and doing one on one classes because I've decided like I'm done. I just I need professional help. But that's what it is. That's what it is about living abroad. It's work to cultivate a life well lived. But the seeds that you're planting and the discomfort that you're feeling is all marching you towards the vision that you hold, which for me feels completely different than my past experience of working hard and being like, I hate this, I don't want any of these things, but I'm working really hard. 
It's a completely different feeling, right? Completely, completely different feeling. All right, let me see where you guys coming in from. Hey, one curvy chick from Arizona. Thank you for stopping by. Let me know where you want to move abroad or if you've lived abroad before. Where were you? Cool chick 88. Hey, su- tuning in from San Diego. I love San Diego. What a great place. Great. Let me know you're in San Diego. Where do you want to go abroad? Uh, what's your timeline? Any other questions that you have? Let me know. All right. All right. I have one question. Do, 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 do. I have, oh, how do I do this? Technology. Here we go. Okay. What was the hardest thing for you about moving abroad in terms of adapting? Oh, yeah. So I'm an introvert and no one believes me. It's just that I'm really passionate about this. And also, I'm basically just talking to myself on the phone. So it's not a lot of like, it's not really high pressured at all. But the thing about moving abroad that was hard in adapting is I'm an introvert and um, going abroad, you have to you have to create friends and friendships. You have to create community. You need to insert yourself in a in type of way. And you think like, OK, I can make friends. But I think it's part of also like after you're done with school and you're an adult, you're like, no, you can't make it make any friends as an adult that's not true but it is a little bit it's not harder it requires a lot of effort and when you're abroad especially maybe in a place you don't speak the language you are so stimulated like i was just so stimulated by things being so different not only just like hearing spanish all the time but it's like things are not where you think it's supposed to be like especially with the grocery store because here in the states everything is one-stop shopping and it's not like that in Europe at all. So you just become so overwhelmed by not knowing things. And it makes you, I think for me, it makes me, it made me tap out at the very beginning. Like I was like, and I gave myself, you know, a little bit of space. But I think I let it go on a little bit too long because as an introvert, you're like, I need to go home. <laughs> I need to go home and then I'll be better. But then you kind of develop maybe a social social anxiety because you're just like, I just thinking about making friends or going to this thing or trying to get this sugar or whatever, whatever have you, right, is literally causing me so much stress because I'm going to say the word and they're going to be like, that's not the right word. And they're going to be like, what are you talking about? So it created like this weird cycle that made me become even more isolated. And that was really hard to break through because the only way to break through is to literally like Kool-Aid man through it. Like I'm not joking. At least it feels that way as an as a introvert. It doesn't feel like I'm just gonna slide in. It literally felt like I had to like fling myself into social situations <laughs> consistently. And I was just like, I don't care if you're tired, Christine. We're gonna go to this meetup. We're gonna go to dinner. We're gonna go have wine. We're gonna go here. We're gonna do this. I'm gonna say this thing and it's gonna be wrong and you just know it's gonna be wrong. That was the hardest part of adapting because when it comes to language, you're just like, I'm a smart person, but I sound like a complete idiot. That's what happens, right? But the more that you put yourself out there, as cheesy as it sounds, it does get better. That's the only way to make friends. That's the only way to build community. That's the only way to find the people that are going to support you and going to make this experience magical. So you got to go out there and uh, it's going to be awkward and it's going to be tiring. But you're going to have really funny stories because everyone does. When you first move, you're going to be like, and there are some of them where it sound like this didn't happen to you. And it 100% did happen to them. It 100% did happen. So that was the hardest thing about moving abroad and adapting. And I feel like unless, even if you go with a partner, you still gotta make your own friends. You still gotta, you still gotta do that. So there's that. Let us see. One curvy chick, Portugal, I need water and beaches. Yes, Portugal is so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Portugal for school. My timeline is the next couple of years and I'm in the process of asking myself the questions you stated and more and doing it with intention as well. Yeah. Now, I don't want you guys to think I was poo-pooing Portugal. I'm not. Portugal's dope. So no. It's just that, you know, from some of the Facebook forums that I'm in and I read the comments and the things that people say, 
I'm just like, look, it's just like moving in the States in a way. Like you need to make sure that you know, like these places have what you're looking for, right? Um, and take that time to really be discerning. This is your life, right? Be discerning. Be discerning about where you want to go. You know what I'm saying? Do, 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 do. The food is amazing. Yeah. Uh, if you follow Cinnamon Driven Spice on YouTube, she was also on the podcast. And also I was on her YouTube channel. And the biggest thing for her was about food. And, uh, you know, in Europe... There's a lot of regulations. We don't just allow anything to be coming into like the country. You can't just eat anything. And a lot of people that I've heard and I've experienced, a lot of, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a doctor, but a lot of people's, you know, maybe food allergies or different kinds of things that they've had in the States have resolved by going abroad. I know for sure I have because I used to like not eat rice and bread and all this other kind of stuff just because I always felt like it's a little like inflamed all the time. And also I'm a vegan. So I was like, I just try to keep it to vegetables and things like that. And I find like I can eat a lot more things <laughs> in Spain that I normally would be like, no, I don't eat that. I don't eat that. And then when I come back to the States, um, I get a rash <laughs> and I really need to figure out what that's about. Because I, I I try to like journal it because I'm like, what am I eating? And I get a rash every time I come to the States. I'm actually in the States right now. I'm going back to Spain uh, in July. Well, now in July this month. And I find myself, I get like a little puffy. I'm a little puffy. Also, I've been eating a lot of peanut butter, like processed peanut butter. Because like, you can't really get that in Spain. <laughs> they give you that natural peanut butter. So I'm like a little bit puffy. And a little bit like rashy and I'm like, okay, I got to go back to Spain because the food here also incredibly expensive for what you get. I went to a farmer's market with my sister. It's like a, like a wide, it's like a big farmer's market kind of thing. And we got all this produce and stuff. Some of it was organic, some of it wasn't. It was like 70 bucks, 80 bucks. It was mostly produce. I was like, what? Well, we got to cashier. And my sister was like, this is better than going to like Publix or Kroger. And I was like, girl, everything we just got, I lich, no lie, probably wouldn't even be 30 euros, not even maybe, tw maybe 25 euros, depending. And if you have a little subscription to like a farmer's basket, no. So the food, but I could, that's a whole different conversation. That's not even what you asked me. Okay. <laughs> um... I heard that I heard that about your body changing once you move abroad regarding food. Yeah. And also, you know, before like I've been in this I've been in the states for like 2 months dealing with some family stuff and before I came back I was normally walking I would definitely get 10,000 steps in no lie, like no no issues. That's just life. Like that's just living <laughs> in Barcelona. And I walked the city and at the time the gyms weren't even open. So I was like walking the city for exercise and stuff like that. Um, and then here I just live this whole sedentary life and it's horrible. And I know my butt is gonna be so caked when I go back. I gotta carry my groceries and I'm gonna be huffing and puffing. It's gonna be bad. Yeah, but your body does change a lot. It does change a lot. Does anyone else have any other questions about the fear of failing abroad, about moving abroad, things to take, things to leave, anything like that? If not, I'm going to sign out quite soon. But I also wanted to mention to all of you that there are resources to help you get, stay, and thrive abroad. I launched them. I'm actually going to be launching a new one. But I launch it first to my email list. So if you're not on the email list, what are you doing? Join the email list. Go to www.flourishsomeforeign.com. If you're interested in starting a business abroad or you're thinking about it, go ahead and grab my Build a Business Abroad free guide. It's completely free. It's like a one-on-one -on -one guide. I think it's quite robust in the questions that it asks and helps you kind of work through. Get that as well. I know that some people want to start a business abroad. Some people don't. Um, which is fine. If you want to get a job abroad, I have a whole podcast called How to Get a Job Abroad. And I have several different episodes in which we talk about getting a job abroad. One being Barbara, who is an international talent 
acquisition specialist. She gives a lot of great gems about how to get a job abroad by being recruited. But also, I have a whole YouTube video with Itia Thomas about how to transfer your career abroad. And a lot of people think like, I just can't. I'm Even if you have a credential or a license, and it's like, that's not true. That's not true because Itia did it. <laughs> Itia worked for uh, project management in uh, construction and she took that abroad to Australia. And now Itia, Itia is a citizen of Australia and she's building a house. So it's doable. It's doable. And I want you guys to definitely get this information from people who do it. Don't get caught up in the echo chambers of Facebook forums because there's a lot of people who don't know what they're talking about. Like a lot. <laughs> like a, there's a lot of people who don't know what they're talking about there. So definitely check out those resources. Um, check out the resource list at www.flourishandforum.com slash resources. And of course, support the podcast. If you listen to the podcast and you love it, please, please consider writing a review for the podcast across any platform that you listen to the podcast. I appreciate you to give it five stars and write a review for it. Share it with your friends because, you know, they need to know if they want to go abroad. They want you to know the nitty gritty truth. Share it with them. Sharing is caring. If you want to support the podcast, I would love for you to financially support the podcast. Become a Patreon member. Buy me a coffee. Cash at me. Uh, cash at me at dollar sign flourish foreign. Buy me a coffee. Buymeacoffee.com slash flourish foreign. Patreon.com slash flourish foreign. All those things, or choose another way by going to flourishandforeign.com slash support. So that is it for uh, me. If you're just tuning in, don't worry. I'm going to post this IG live to the grid. Check it out. Leave me some comments because I'll always come back and respond. If you have any other concerns or anything like that, you know, slide to my DMs. I, I'm there and I will <laughs> respond. <laughs> On my own time, though, because I do get a lot of DMs and stuff like that. All right. This has been wonderful. Again, please, please, if you caught it in the middle, go to the beginning because I think I give some really solid advice about how to not fail abroad, how not to get caught up in that and how to really succeed and really thrive abroad. So check out the entire IG live. I'm going to post it on the grid. Hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.